Hello and welcome to the Jenkins Safra meeting of uh, the 15th of uh, February. Um, we'll start with the announcement. Uh, uh, there, is a, there was a core security release last week. And uh, the, there is also a plugin security release today in progress. Uh, so finishing the doc and uh, the publishing of advisory. And uh, we'll uh, delay uh, the weekly release uh, for tomorrow, since there are uh, system V change, which need uh, an announcement um, uh, before releasing it. Yeah, Tim, I assume you're okay if I do a blog post about that? Uh, system day stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be good. I just expect I expect lots of lots of shouting, and I think it's healthy for us if we have a before the shouting starts. We have a blog post that says, "Look, we said it happened here. Where we, it's intentional. This is not not active hate. This is us thinking about it and realizing we need to get to a modern modern way of doing process management in our services." I was going to suggest a tweet at least. <laughs> It's probably quicker. <laughs> I'm so, so, oh yes, and I will certainly tweet it as well. It just for me the the blog post is is a uh, is a is a an after the fact thing where we can highlight. Look, here are the, some of the instructions we offered. Here are some of the things that we've we've implemented to try to be make this as smooth as we can. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm sure I'm sure there'll be issues for some people, but generally it should just work. Okay. So we had uh, an update on ci.jenkins.io. Uh, we, there, weren't, there weren't any new uh, agent uh, allocated. So we found the root cause. It was uh, uh, missing uh, I, IAM uh, permission to allow uh, autoscaling. Uh, we saw the go panic in uh, in the autoscaler it was crash loop packing um, so we we try to upgrade the telephone module and uh, the minor version wasn't minor at all they, they it was a major all... version change it was a major it was a change. major they remove a lot of, of uh, stuff around uh, authentication, around users, around uh, uh, worker groups. They rename uh, a lot of variables. They change the way of declaring uh, for uh, loops, a lot of change. So it didn't uh, fix our problem, but we need it anyway. So. And as uh, Damien uh, write it, uh, right here, um, we have some benefits like faster auto-scaling, less resource, because we don't need a public IP now. And uh, during this upgrade, we found the missing permission by comparing what we had and what we needed. We have uh, to write a postmortem and uh, uh, to a full request on the um, on the module to on the repository to add the new permission, and uh, we have also the Docker up credential to put in place, and uh, this is the next point. I forgot to write down. We also have to um, contact AWS support or see if we can pull request their documentation to add the missing or contact someone at AWS saying, hey folks, since last Friday, if you don't have that permission, it's not working anymore. Because it, the AWS documentation shows less permission than the Terraform module, which show less than what is required since Friday. So they made some break, they made a breaking change. On a scale from zero to Azure changing their network implementation, we are closest to Azure network. Cloud. Mm. 
Thanks, survey and everyone. Oh, sorry for being late. Do you want me to take the lead or you yeah, you're actually yeah, on the road? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, I, thank <laughs> you. <laughs> Thanks for that. Help. Are there any qu other question uh, on Maybe the okay stuff uh, before the Docker Hub? No question. OK, so let's go ahead. Uh, one of the consequences of changing the topology of the worker node on that cluster is that we went from public IP to private IPs. The direct impact is that we started to see uh, pods in error status where they were enabled to pull the image from the Docker Hub because one, we use the Docker Hub for the DNLP whatever agent. And two, the Docker Hub, if you are if you aren't authenticated, then it uses the public IP as a way to aggregate the request per day or per six hour windows. I don't remember exactly. Since we have private IPs for each worker nodes, it means they only have one egress IP seen from the Docker Hub. So all the pool come from are counted to that public IP. Direct consequence, we are rate limited. Um, we applied a short term fix because we had to handle the CI Jenkins IO queue. So we did a Docker registry secret like we did on the past with a new account, Docker Hub account, because we don't want to reuse the existing one. That's absolutely out of question. That's a public instance. So the probability of that credential being stolen accidentally is close to 100%, which means we don't want someone pushing images that we will use. That's a free and empty account. Any images pushed on that account can be removed without even thinking. Can we use that account on the um, on the VM images as well? That could be interesting. Yeah, that, that could be um, yeah, that could be a good idea. Because currently we get like two or three builds an hour on the um, yeah. on the Docker builds. <laughs> Otherwise, we get rate limiting. <laughs> Yes. I, yeah, so, is, yep. Sorry. Go ahead, Mark. I just to to echo what Tim was describing. I'm accustomed to having to do a rebuild or a schedule a rebuild two hours from now, so that it will have quieted uh, on the rate limit and give us another chance. We normally get like five defender bot PRs all coming in within minutes, and they're not all going to pass. <laughs> yeah. That that's weird because the the VM should be recycled after one build on CI Jenkins IO. Yeah, it, it may be that that what the, the rate limit we're seeing is something different than the rate limit that you're seeing in terms of IP. I don't know. It just I I, I know we've seen surprise uh, yeah. failures. It might, it, might, it might be better now. I don't know. But yeah. if you have links, that's interesting because that's nothing yeah. too recent. I haven't done any work um, here in a while. Just a reminder: last time we had the discussion and mm. that we tried to embed the configuration on the virtual machines. We we were again rate limited because rate limit went from public IP to the account used and configured for the Docker engines, which is rate limited daily compared to the six hour windows of the public IPs, mm -hmm. which mean if we have too much builds with the same account, then we hit that limit. However, <laughs> since we are an open source project, we could ask for uh, increasing that limit for that account. But I mean, it also means that we might want to step away from the Docker Hub. So yeah, step by just step. Move to exactly. AWS or GitHub. <laughs> exactly. There are multiple ways of doing that. So that was only a short term fix. So I've put the yeah. references of what we did for well, that part. We'll keep an eye on it and see what happens. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like we could fairly easily mirror all the Jenkins images to. GitHub container registry, and then you wouldn't have to worry about it as well. Exactly. I mean, we have today two kinds of containers, the container we build and the container ex external container we use. So if we start by the one we build, we could push them directly to AWS or Docker Hub and AWS or whatever registry. That should be a first uh, layer. Second thing, proposal from Hervé, uh, we can totally add a Docker image proxy on the cluster and as well on the uh, on the AWS where we spawn the VM agent and same on Azure, we can add on a Docker proxy on each. 
Not sure how it works technically, but that could be an idea. Mm -hmm. And finally, switching back to public IP. I mean, we have to pay, but that's that's something that was working. So that's also a long-term solution. Uh, uh, another consequence is that not only the CI Jenkins IO workload, but also we had Datadog that was rate limited because it appeared that we don't use the official agent Datadog image. We use a custom image built from the official with some stuff copied within. Uh, I, I didn't know, I didn't know that part. And since they are built by ourselves, so pushed on Jenkins CI of round Docker up, they were rate limited. So here we saw a nice learning opportunity to help Stefan to get started the hard way on Kubernetes because it's not an easy topic. Uh, so he's going through the create a Helm chart uh, that would allow to specify a list of namespace. So on each cluster, if you specify the Helm chart, it will create the Docker registry secrets on all the namespaces. That will allow to specify one time on subs the account on one location. And the Helm chart will install on each namespace. So each namespace could use the Docker registry to authenticate their Docker pool. That should be at least a tool that we can reuse. And once used for both Jenkins agents and Datadog, we can stop using it, move to a proxy, but we can in the future reuse that if we need it on short term. That would help. And long term is finding on Datadog why the hell are we using this custom image while Datadog provide everything on the Helm charts. I would prefer uh, using relying on Datadog, especially since it's less things for us to build. And I bet that we copy some files because we weren't able to, to mount them on the charts from an old time. But now the Helm charts of Datadog does this for us, so that should be easily fixed. Are there any other question? People who want to work on that, ideas, feedbacks? One, two, three. No, oh, okay. So that should be fixed. End of day. Now, Digital Ocean, Hervé, Mike, yours again. Yes. Um... It's still a work in progress. I have uh, my uh, my cluster uh, speaking with my local uh, Jenkins instance, and I have to reproduce it uh, um, on ci.jenkins.io and in a puppet and for our code. Nice. So that will be the surprise. We are going to discover what is the behavior of Jenkins when we provide two Kubernetes clusters. How is the scheduling acting with these cases? Just put three Kubernetes clusters in. <laughs> then make it one to N. Three? Oh, you oh, already no. have I, I think... share as well. And and Oracle, get four. Go for four. <laughs> Eventually. Yes, right. The the, the yes, Very multi cloud, multi cloud everything. <laughs> the thing is, at the moment on time, we might be interested on in having only a single control plane, but multiple worker nodes. I know that at least. I think it's Google and Scaleware, they are both providing that ability. Uh, so you have only one Kubernetes controller connected to Jenkins, and then you specify um, auto-scaling worker pools on different locations. That could be interesting for us, at least. I feel like it's more <laughs> but I mean, management. If, I don't know. If DigitalOcean gives us enough credits, I mean, I don't mind having one only one uh, on their cloud system. <laughs> Um, something to be careful of, uh, I, I told Hervé that, but we have to remind us, we have to put a maximum amount of pods that we can allocate per Kubernetes cluster at CI Jenkins IO level. Just to be sure that Jenkins doesn't start to schedule hundreds of pods to the poor digital ocean cluster that only has two worker nodes today, because it will, uh, we, or we will end with a bunch of pods in pending states. 
Mm. And since it's hard to anticipate, is Jenkins going to try to schedule this pod on the other Kubernetes cluster? That would be better to say to Jenkins, if you try to schedule more than X pods, then it's full, don't try more. Yeah, yeah, definitely set it to like four pods or whatever, depending on what size nodes you're doing. Exactly, because we have a static capacity for that one. Great job, Hervé. I'm happy that you are able to do this. That's really a good achievement. Um, are there other questions about digital sound point, things you want to clarify? So is it all working now? Sorry? Sorry. Is DigitalOcean working now? Or is it, maybe missed that. So it's uh, working with a local instance. Okay. Yes, uh, is, I have a, a cluster on digital ascent uh, work, uh, running, a uh, little one, and I uh, put a service account on it so I could re retrieve its token cool. and link it to. And Hervé the... terraformed it. That's the secret. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So it was, all right, created yeah. with Terraform on DigitalOcean. Great. I did the link to the repository. Next step, update CLI for Terraform. So since last week, uh, Stefan added more tracking elements using update CLI to track the, ch the moving parts of our infrastructure. Um, most of them are related to Terraform, directly or indirectly. For instance, now both Infra CI and Release CI have virtual machine capabilities. They are run tight only to container like they were before. And these virtual machines have the template up to date at almost the same rate as CI Jenkins IO, which mean Release and Infra are now able to have exactly the same environment as CI Jenkins IO. If you read between the lines, that means the death of trusted CI on a visible future in favor of release CI. Not mentioning the ability to say, hey, if we split CI and CD for our contributor, they should have the same environment for release as they see on the public CI. Makes obvious, but that's hard to ensure when you have different Jenkins instances. So great jobs, uh, Stefan. That also allows, in short term now, the ability to run our Packer system to build Docker images, which is already the case. We only have to deploy these images to a remote registry and use them, but the loop is almost closed. So we will, so we could have exactly the same content between Docker images and VM images for agents. There are other, let's say, more minor updates, like update, getting the security group's names on one repo and updating them on other repo. These are operational day-to-day -day things, but congrats, Stefan, you are now a master of updates. Eli. I don't know if there are other questions, things that I could have forgot on that topic to clarify. So great job, folks. Um, CI Jenkins IO not only has been security updated in the past hour, uh, also it now features the latest GDK 17 and 8 versions that, uh, that have been deployed. GDK 8 is two weeks old, but uh, we had something broken on the build process that delayed the release. And thanks, Mark, for catching yet another name change pattern for the open GDK. <laughs> The, the 17 that time, so we had to change all the update process and the provisioning script and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. It's annoying. They always do that when they switch. They do, they do like one GA version, and then they switch the project yeah. into maintenance mode, and they rename it. I've had that before. Of course, CI to be maintained. It's like, really? Do you have to do that? Um, uh, 
Yeah, and good catch mark on the GDK 11 is now featuring a four digit pattern. So we will have to update all the system to be sure that it supports because it has been released, but no pull request open automatically yet. So that means we don't catch that new version. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, well, no, no one uses java.net to HTTP client anyway. <laughs> Who upgrade their right. Java instance? Ever, ever. That that <laughs> that of all. Not on the Jenkins project anyway. <laughs> oh, that's good. I, I hadn't done that investigation. I was really terrified when I saw what the what the regression was. But you're saying, Tim, it's not a commonly used thing in the Jenkins project. It, you can only use it from Java 11, and we're not allowed to use Java 11. Oh, until got some, it. Until okay. someone finishes their jet. <laughs> huh? Wonder who that is. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> so thanks a lot. That's also a good thing. It means that I'm not the only person being able to manage the Packer, uh, the Packer tooling. Mark is now seems at ease. Stefan also. So I'm not the best factor here. Or I assume, I assume for me it's a good it's a good assertion. <laughs> Are you Too working your retirement already? No way. There is a pull request with your name, Mark. Too late. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot for this. Are there any other top priority topic or can we move on on the subject delay from last week? Let's go ahead. So building Docker images on infra CI release CI. So as we said earlier, now that we have the full virtual machine capability, there is a task to do that will be to update the existing shared library, the Groovy library used for the pipelines to allow that capability. Should it replace the current EMG inside the container in Kubernetes or should they be complementary? I, I don't know, but there is a task to allow that. The reason being, we should be able to build for new architectures and new platforms such as Windows container, because right now our Windows Docker images rely on the Jenkins CI images and we want to own the full stack. So that will allow that part. So Damien, on that, I've, I've been using Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8 for about four weeks now, mm -hmm. and they don't even deliver Docker CE, they do Podman. Yeah. So, yeah. so this kind of thing, I, I've been getting firsthand experience with it. Not that it changes anything we do, but I, there, it's, it's not just Kubernetes where sometimes you can't do Docker. Yes. Thanks. So I'm sure I'm sure you can install it. <laughs> oh, oh yes, no, no doubt. You can. I'm just trying to stay default to, to experience it the way others experience it. Yes. Yeah. I agree, yeah. Tim. I know there's a solution if I wanted it. However, we don't run uh, Red Hat on our platform, which I'm really grateful for. Yeah, and and, uh, and, and this is not a request that we do so. Only only a note that it is a it is an interesting platform. It's a, a commercially relevant platform out in the world. And so us being mindful of it isn't harmful. Mm. However, since Red Hat advertised that Podman is so perfect and so secure that they should allow a Docker in Podman, which they don't. So not my problem. <laughs> Sorry, for a, th that one was cynical, but I mean, if you look at the aliases on Erasual 8, you should see alias docker equals podman, literally. So I hope they are good at keeping up with the Docker API changes, but again, but that's a good point. That's the reason why some people need it. So it's a to-do list. There is no priority on that one, but that should be quite useful. If anyone is interested in contributing on shared pipeline library, help is welcome on that part. A word about security on infra CI. We start to have a lot of different jobs for different use cases on infra CI. That instance was first started only for infra stuff, but now we deploy previews for a website for Jenkins IO. We have Terraform. We might we need to move puppets on that part. So in order to improve step by step to add another security layer, we will want to split the credential and jobs on different areas that will allow to scope credential per repository to apply the least principal privilege. Good luck. I don't, 
Um, yeah, we need to handle job DSL because right now Gcask only allows us to specify credential at the top level on the Jenkins instance. So now we need to find the correct directive on job DSL to say, I want to load the credential from that environment variable. So for us, it will just move the environment variable definition from one part of the YAML to another, except the another, we need a specific syntax. Is it, is it better better to just move the Netlify stuff to ci.jenkins.io instead? Uh, if you have a credential on ci.jenkins.io, consider it act. Yeah, but if we can scope it to just preview deployment sites. Yeah, I'm not really at ease with that one. Because uh, it's not only the preview sites that will bother me. It's the fact that Terraform jobs can access the credential that they should not have and vice versa. So it, whether or not we move, that won't solve the issue that we need to split the credential scopes. That's a good practice in production with sensitive credentials as ours. So um, we could split the Jenkins instances. Uh, um, there are long-term things that moving all the credentials out of Jenkins and connecting Jenkins to a remote vault system. But right now we could easily update the job DSL port and use the Jenkins already available feature. It's configuration changes. Worst case, we break infrastructure and we roll back. So moving to remote credential storage doesn't really change anything. You can still get the credentials just the same through, through Jenkins APIs. Yes, but for instance, Garrett started a work last year using Kubernetes uh, secrets. So Jenkins doesn't store credentials. When you request a credential, it's just a placeholder. And Jenkins will get the credential from the Kubernetes secrets. So Jenkins will never encrypt the credential on its Jenkins home. It will always be on in memory. So Jenkins is just used as a conduit to get retrieve the credential, put it on the pipeline, and then remove it. I, don't, I really don't think it makes much difference. Um, like, sure, it's not written to disk encrypted, but that's, that's just one very minor area, I think. I mean, uh, you can still you can, Yeah, sorry? You, you can still just request just with credentials, credential ID, and you'll just get it from Kubernetes just the same. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so. then on Kubernetes, we have to store the credential encrypted in the cloud vault. We have a cloud vault for each Kubernetes provider because Kubernetes alone is only hashing the password in secrets. But the goal is to rely on the underlying cloud. Like we have an Azure KMS right now. So that will be that's a, a more complicated topic. So that's why I say long term. Right now, we have the ability to start scoping credentials. Sure. Uh, we are also have the, the reason to separate the jobs is also because we need different properties. Terraform jobs doesn't have the same properties as Docker jobs, especially in terms of the ability to. Uh, to do GitHub checks feedbacks. For some jobs, we don't care, even though we need to have a feedbacks for public users. And for some jobs, we don't want. So since we need these different policies per jobs, separating per kind of policy, even of folders instead of GitHub organization avoids the dread uh, configuration. Like I go to GitHub configuration, I change one trait, and then I have to wait for the watch to apply everywhere. And then two days later, someone else complains because they have that new trace that they don't want. So you have to split, et cetera, et cetera, which is a maintenance hell. So in our case, that's also another high level reason to split. Uh, in the to-do list, we have Alibaba mirrors as well. Uh, I, I don't know what the status is, Mark. We've, we've hit uh, our 30 minutes there, but Alibaba had offered to provide a mirror and we haven't yet registered it with our mirroring system. Okay, so that's also to, a task to do, right? Right, it is, it is a to do. And, and we had, I had asked them a question about the physical location, didn't get an answer, but 
actually, it doesn't matter. It would be great to have one more physical location in, in the U.S., as an example, because right now the entire U.S. West Coast is being served by a single, a single mirror that's out of, that says it's in the middle of the continent. Okay. For the two other top level tasks before we close, um, I'm the bus factor for both. See, at Jenkins IO, I still need to finish writing the epic issues milestone to give you visibility. So I have to extract things from my head and put them on issues. Some issues already exist, some other don't. So I'm the bus factor here, so no, no need. Um, Daniel fixed the matrix free errors on CI Jenkins, I don't trust it. Thanks, Daniel. It's not GCASCT, but he fixed that directly on the Groovy, but at least it's fixed. So no emergency to rush that part. And census, I still have an email to send. Uh, is it okay for you? Or we have two topics to delay to next week. For the rest, it's to the list. Everyone has to go. Unless there is missing topic. Last point, things. One, two, three, okay. So now we have all to pick these tasks and run. Thanks everyone. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks.